Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. You know, just the other day I was reminded that there's nothing quite like sunshine on a rainy day. And to celebrate that, I created this lovely animated weather icon. Look at the sun there bursting out and the rain raining. Anyway, I decided that you needed to know how to do it. And since I'm in charge around here, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to start off with the cloud, we'll move on to the sun and finish off with the rain. And then we'll bring all of them together in one composite icon. Along the way, you're going to learn how easy it is to create these components and finally say goodbye to the vector editing software you've been using and hello to doing it all in code. So now that I've got the wheels on this episode spinning, let's release the handbrake. Right, let's get down to the business of building a cloud. And the approach I'm going to take for all three of these elements, the cloud, the sun, and the rain, is that I'm going to design them, scale to the entire frame, and then use a wrapping element view that scales them to the appropriate size for the icon we're creating. In this case, it's the sunshine on a rainy day icon, so things might need to be a little bit smaller if you've got all three elements in one icon than if you're just displaying the sun, for example. So that's why it's nice to have an element view that can control that so we don't have to clutter up our actual composite icon view. As you can see, I've got these things laid out in front of us. I've got our cloud shape, which is going to define the shape of our cloud. I'm using that in a cloud view, which is going to give that shape some styling. The element is going to give it the scale and the position. So the first thing we're going to do in this cloud is set up a reference image that we can use as a template for our cloud. So to do that, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put our cloud element in a Z stack. I'm going to move the frame to the Z stack because I want the reference image to be the same size. And I'm going to use an SF symbol, which is the cloud fill SF symbol. Now that's obviously the wrong size. So we're going to say resized to fit which will bring it up to the size of our frame. And I've got a padding of 50 around this. So that is filling the entire frame, as you'll see in just a minute. But I'm going to make the foreground color black, but almost transparent. So we can just about see it and trace around it. Foreground color black with an opacity of 0.2. And now we can go up to our cloud view and design the layout guide we're going to use to create our cloud. Now I'm going to be using layout guides for this, and if you don't know what they are, they're a part of pure Swift UI that allow you to reference specific points in a frame as coordinates, rather than worrying about the points themselves. I've done a series on them that goes into all the nitty gritty details, so have a watch if you want to know more. I'm going to be developing the config for this layout guide in the body, so I can get real time updates as to how it's looking before moving it up to the file private level where it can be referenced in the shape. Let cloud layout config and that's a layout guide config of type grid and we're going to want to specify an array of columns and rows because we want to be really specific about where these columns and rows are. What we want to do is put a column row intersection, in other words a coordinate, at every point of interest on this shape. When we've done that creating the shape is literally a case of joining the dots. Let's put in the endpoints and the midpoints so we've got something to work with. Zero. 0 0.51, 0, 0 0.51. Then we overlay that layout guide config on top of the shape. Layout guide, cloud layout config. And before I enable layout guides to be shown, I want to drive that with a debug constant so we can also use that debug parameter when creating the cloud because we're going to be using Bezier curves. And it's really nice to be able to see the control points when using Bezier curves, but we don't want to show them all the time. So we want to base whether or not we're showing our control points on whether or not we're debugging. Let's put that in now. Let debug equals true. And as you can see, the cloud shape I set up already takes a debug parameter. So I just need to pass it in like this. Debug is debug. We can now use that debug constant to drive whether or not we're showing layout guides. Showing layout guides, debug. But let's make it a bit easier to see in contrast to that gray cloud. We're going to give the layout a color of red and an opacity of one. So the way I create the columns and rows that we need is as follows. When I'm doing the columns, I go from left to right, putting a column at each point of interest. And then for the rows, I go from top to bottom doing the same thing. And this is the fun part. You can go up and down the number keys with the left hand and with the right hand, you just control the delete key. You make a guess as to where the line needs to be, say 0.1, and you can see that's not 
far enough. So you press delete two and we've gone too far. So we go delete one and then we start on the next decimal place. So we go four and that's almost there. We know five is gonna be far too much. So then we try the next decimal place. We go one and that looks just about perfect. Let's do the next one, which is this point at the bottom. It's going to be a bit further on, so let's try 0.15 to start with. It's almost there. Delete 6, delete 7, perfect. Let's do the next point of interest, which is at the top right. So let's try 0 0.7. Okay, 0 0.8. Nope, it's too far. Delete 7, and then 4. Bit too far. Delete 3. 5, delete 6, delete 7. Now, using this process, you can define these points very quickly. Since I know what the rest of these columns and rows need to be, I'm going to whiz through them like the flash so we can get on with building the shape. Now we've got our columns and rows set up the way we want them, I can move this up and make it file private. So now we can reference that from the shape. But before we do that, I need to put some styling on this so we can see the stroke as we're building it in debug mode, but we get the fill that we want when we're not in debug mode. So I'm going to put a styling function on cloud shape, which is going to be a view builder called styling returns some view. If we're debugging, I want to return a stroke with a color of black and a style with a line width of two, a line cap of round, and a line join of round. We can get rid of the rest of the arguments. And if we're not debugging, I want to fill it with a nice gradient. Gradient with the following shades of white, 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. We're going to send that to the bottom. And then all I have to do is call styling on shape. So let's resume. If you've seen anything where I've been constructing shapes based on layout guides, you know the first thing that we do is set up the layout guide in the rectangle that we have provided. Let G is the cloud layout config laid out in the rectangle. And then we'll just move to the first point, which is this one. Path move G 2,3. Let's give ourselves a bit more room. And now we can start putting in these curves. Now we're going to be using a new feature of layout guides released in Pure Swift UI 2.1.0, which frees us from the confines of using predefined coordinates. And you can now put points anywhere relative to the coordinate system of the layout guide we're using. So in this case for grids, it means you can reference relative X and Y coordinates by using an overloaded subscript taking a named argument called rel. So let's put in the first curve initially with the control points at the origin and destination points. Path, curve, and we're going to 1, 2. The first control point is going to be the origin, which is 2, 3. The second control point is going to be the destination, which is 1, 2. And we're going to show control points based on whether or not we're debugging. You can now see the line, but the control points are co-located with the origin and destination. So now we're going to do something about that by using this new relative subscript. We know that both of these control points need to come out to the left. So for the X coordinate, let's put them at a relative value of zero. Rel, zero, rel, zero. And you can see they've both gone over to the wall on the left. Great, but they need to go a bit further. And when using relative coordinates like this, you can go beyond the range of the grid by using values that are less than zero or values that are greater than one. We can actually say that they need to go out to minus 0 0.05. Let's try the same for the other one, minus 0 0.05. And this is looking a lot better, but now we need to focus on the Y because being on the three and the two, as far as the coordinates are concerned, isn't working for us. We need to use relative coordinates here as well. So for the first control point, let's try 0 0.7. And that's not far enough down. So let's try 0 0.85. Too far. 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's do the other one. So we'll try a relative value of 0 0.5. And that looks just about perfect.
And this is the same technique I used to create all three of the curves in this cloud. So rather than bore you with going through that process again, I'm going to speed through the next two curves and then we'll talk about how to refine this shape if we really want to get precise. So there we go, we've got our shape and it's looking fantastic. And this is why I put padding around it because I really wanted you to see where these control points were going and how they can extend outside the constraints of that particular frame. But now we can make this even more precise if we want to. We don't need to, okay? But if we wanted to make this even more precise, we could do this little trick here. I go up to my main view, take off the styling so it goes black. And you can still see where the control points are, even though it's fill, because debug is still switched on. And then we go down to our preview here, and we change the foreground color of our template image to white. And then we set the blend mode to difference, all right? And by doing that, we can see that the more black there is, the more we're deviating from the original design. So if you really wanted to, you could get this even closer by going on playing around with the control points. And you don't even have to think about what you're doing because all you do is you change a value and if there's more black, then you're going in the wrong direction, right? So you just adjust these things until there's the minimum amount of black possible. But we don't need to do that in this case because we just want a cloud. We're not trying to precisely recreate the SF symbol cloud. So let's go down here. We can get rid of that, get rid of the SF symbol there re-indent things a bit and then we can go up to our view and say debug is false and put back the styling and now we can go to our element view and just say that the scale is 0.7 and then we can adjust the position of it when it comes to constructing the icon so there we are we've got our cloud and in the next episode we're going to be working on the sun so join me for that it's going to be brilliant don't forget to like the video, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing if you don't want to miss the rest. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.